Too many hockey players don't know how to balance their off-ice training with their on-ice sessions. At the pro levels of hockey, this becomes incredibly important and NHL players have trainers to help them find the right structure. In this video, I'm going to do the same for you. I'll explain the principles of balancing a busy hockey schedule with effective off-ice training, and then I'll give you a template that you can use to structure your own training. Principle one is about understanding efficiency and minimalistic training. More is not always better. If we can get results with less time, that is always the better option. If you're on the ice five days or more a week, you can't seriously train off the ice five days a week as well. We need to cut that down to three or even one or two gym sessions per week. That means scrapping exercises that don't have a big bang for your buck. Instead of three leg exercises that day, let's just back squat. Instead of a bodybuilding split, let's do two full body days. Remember, more is not better. Better is better. Principle two is about balancing your intensity levels. Hockey games will almost always be intense. You're going at close to 100%, it's physical, and you'll leave everything out on the ice. Compare that to a practice where you're just working skills at a light intensity. The two are very different and your recovery requirements from each will also be different. In fact, the skill session can be used to recover from a game. In the same way, a heavy weightlifting session is very different from jogging. A light jog or walk can be an excellent tool to recover from a day of heavy lifting. This is an important principle to keep in mind and it's something that we will go back to at the end of the video when I give you a training schedule. Think about following a high intensity day with a low intensity day throughout the week and your recovery and performance will be much better as a result. Principle number three is about building up a high tolerance to more and more training volume. As you get in better shape, you can handle more workouts. There are many people out there that train twice a day and are fine, but it took them a while to get there. As you train and increase your volume over the years, you'll be able to handle more training in any given week. That means you can handle lifting heavy weights after a game or going for a run the day before an on-ice session and not having it affect your performance. Yermer Yager is an example of a player that did this and probably still does. He is a fitness freak and was often seen training after a game, but he built up to this ability over the years by listening to his body and paying attention to how these workouts made him feel. Principle number four is that you won't feel the same every week. Some weeks are busier and some you will feel better than others. Energy and recovery can depend on multiple factors. Stress, sleep, nutrition, the weather. Listen to your body. If you need a rest day, take it. If you feel good, train. Focus on the long term and don't stress out about a missed workout or a lazy week here and there. Make sure also not to worry if you're tired during a practice or a game. Notice it and see if there is something that you can improve, whether it's your sleep, your relaxation time, or your diet. Principle five is that there is no perfect way to do this. There are infinite ways to set up a training week, and that is why I spend so much time on the principles. Once you understand these, you can tweak your schedule depending on your personal situation. For example, a week where you're in a tournament playing three games a day is going to be different than a week when you only have two games. When you know the principles, you can adjust your schedule with this knowledge. That being said, let's take a look at a training template for somebody who is on the ice four times a week. In this example, on Monday you have a practice, on Tuesday there's no hockey, Wednesday you have a game, Thursday, you have a practice again. Friday is a rest day with no hockey. Saturday is a game and Sunday is a practice. So we're on the ice four times, two games and two practices. We also wanna get in one to two days of lifting and power training and one session of light cardio. So on Monday, you have practice. You could lift before or after practice because you have a day in between to rest before your game. Tuesday, you have nothing and it's a perfect day to rest before the game or to go for a light jog to recover from the day before and add a little bit to your aerobic capabilities. Wednesday is a game day and you wanna be fresh so you don't need to do any structured training that day, maybe just some light movement. Now, if you don't lift on Monday, you can also do it on Wednesday after your game or on Thursday. Remember, we wanna keep at least 48 hours between high intensity sessions like a game or a practice. Since we don't have a game until Saturday, a heavy weightlifting session on Wednesday after your game or Thursday is ideal. Friday can be a rest day or you can go do some light cardio. Again, on Saturday you have a game, so you don't wanna do anything before, but you could do a weight workout after. It could also be a good time to do some light cardio after the game to help you recover. And then on Sunday you have practice. I wouldn't do cardio before practice, but you could do weights before or after and cardio after. I threw a lot at you there, so let's look at this again with everything filled out. Monday, practice. Tuesday, no hockey, light cardio. Wednesday, game. Thursday, practice, weight training in the morning before practice. Friday, rest day. Saturday, game. Sunday, practice, weight training after practice. Done this way, we have four days of hockey and two days of weight training. You have one day of cardio, which will help you recover. And with all the ice time, you really only need one day of cardio, if even that much. Remember that you're building your cardio just by playing hockey. And even better, it's specific to the sport. And we have a full rest day in the week to help you recover. Now remember, this is just one way to do this. There are tons of options, but hopefully this helps you understand how to structure your training during the week. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments. Thank you for watching. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video.